What's up, everyone? It's Dr. Glenn Vo, and you know what? This is kind of an impromptu Facebook Live. I was talking to my good friend here, Evan Lazard. Evan, say what's up to everyone in Nifty Thrifty Dennis. What's going on, Nifty Thrifty? How are we doing today? Yeah, so, you know, <laughs> the thing is, is that I uh, we were having a conversation, <clears throat> and uh, we were discussing, because you were going to do a Facebook Live later in the week, and man, we had some some COVID-19 real talk, right? And so I said, let's, let's just go on live right now. And, um, and what does that real talk, what does that entail? Well, what it entails is, you know, we're facing a, a new reality, right, Evan? I mean, there's a possibility of a new reality here. I, I see it all the time. People posting that their state is saying, hey, you can't do elective dental procedures for another month, for another two months. Someone posted that, and I wasn't sure if it was true or not. Someone said September for their, their month, and there's like a new reality there. And we were talking about that, Evan, because here's the thing. Um, okay, if you're going to close your doors for a few weeks, that's one thing, right, Evan? That's one thing. Correct. If you're going to close your doors for a month, that's another thing. But then we were talking about if you close your doors for three months, okay, that's some dire consequences there. Now, then we go to the flip side. You were saying, well, um, cause a lot of clients have reached out to you, right? A lot of clients have reached out to you and, and actually I'm going to let you share a story that you just shared with me just now. I thought it was pretty powerful. So I'm gonna let you talk about it. Talk, talk about that, that client of yours. So, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, when, just before I get into the story, you and I had planned on doing something and, and I had literally written out a whole bunch of talking points on communicating with your patients. And, hey, we're going to do that, right? Yeah, I feel like we and, need to talk about this. But there's, I think there's so much more powerful information that I can provide. And, you know, a lot of that just comes from the conversations I've had in the last 10 days with probably north of 100 healthcare providers. Um, and, and what I was saying to what I was saying to you was that there was one that said something to me that really, it, it, it stuck on me. Um, more so than I think anything anybody else has said to me to date about their business. And we've talked, and I've talked about every aspect, money, loans, marketing, you name it. I've covered every topic within this whole realm of what we're dealing with. Um, but a doctor said, he was an oral surgeon <clears throat> and he said to me, look, Evan, I've already come to the reality with the fact that I am going to get the virus. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when. And I think, and he said to me, as soon as my colleagues and my peers swallow that pill, going back to work is going to be a lot easier for them. So what he said to me, he said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get it. I'm going to do everything in my power to be, to prevent it, to try not to get it. I'm not going to jump into it. Yeah. However, this is my profession. I work up in people's faces. I can do whatever I can do to try to mitigate it. But for me, I believe it's inevitable. And you know, it's, it's funny when you brought that up, I had to just sit there and think about it for a second because, um, you know, you, everyone thinks like, okay, I'm just going to stay away. I'm going to do all these different things, but man, we are at such high risk, right? We're at such high risk to contract this. And that's the reason why so many of us, it's so, such a like a spirited debate between the people who say hey look let's just stay home just close your office your, your life's more important than your work and all those things and we get that and i get that right and then there's another group of us who feel like we have a job to do we got to take care of these patients and look and there's a lot of people who say economically i have to go back to work and we were talking about that new reality of that look there's a good chance you might get it because as dennis we're this this close, this close away from our, our, our patients, right? They're like right there, right? Um, so there's a new reality there. And their new reality would be, would be um, is the new reality being that, well, what are we going to do after three months? I mean, you're going to have to go back to work, right? And so we wanted to talk about that. Guys, if you can hear what we're saying, type in the comment section. I'm looking over here right now. Uh, we're on Zoom today because... I initially brought Evan on to talk about the new reality, but not not such a such a dire in a dire way, but more of like, hey, look, we got to be prepared to see these emergency patients, the market differently, and whatnot. But 
Uh, we just wanted to start with that because really, guys, you got to start thinking about that. Um, and uh, so anyways, Evan, let's let's jump into let's just jump into the marketing aspect. Right. So here's the thing. OK, the uh, all these dental boards and states they are saying we can't do elective dental, dental procedures. OK, that's probably going to be our new reality for a long time. OK, so if that's the case. Isn't it makes, doesn't it make sense that we let our patients, our own patients, but also potential patients out there who are having a dental emergency, isn't it make, doesn't it make sense that we let them know that we're open? A hundred percent. I I don't, I, I think that if you haven't taken the time over the last two weeks, whatever it's been to not only think about I mean, listen, we all have this sort of mental priority list, right? We have to deal with the reality of who's paying my staff. What am I going to do tomorrow? How am I making payroll, right? The, 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 how do I keep the lights on? But, but when you, I think, I think many of, many of us, or at least most, a lot of my clients have are in the process or have tackled that um, at least in the short term, but you also have to figure out what are, what are you doing to communicate with your patients? Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know about your inbox, uh, Glenn, but my inbox for my personal email has been flooded with COVID-19 emails from everybody and anybody and everybody. <laughs> like yeah. I get COVID-19 emails from McDonald's to, you know, the, the, it literally it encompasses the whole spectrum. So I think the emails at this point are kind of falling deaf on people. I don't think anybody wants to read it. We all know what's going on. We get it. You're closed. You don't need to share with us the obvious. Um, I think the messaging at this point needs to be to your patients, you know, clearly what you're attempting to do to make your practice safer for them. Um, what your thoughts are about what they can do at home, um, you know, for them and their families uh, to, to, you know, to maintain their hygiene or, you know, to literally to be a good physician to them as it relates to what it is you're doing. I think it makes sense to be old school, pick up the phone and call people, check in. I know it's not an easy thing to do. Uh, some of you have big practices hundreds, if not thousands of patients. That is not an easy thing to do, but you can divide and conquer. You have staff, put them on the phones, pick up the phone. How are we doing? How's everybody in the house feel? Be their friend, be their doctor. Uh, you may not be their GP, but you need to be their doctor right now today because you know everybody's nervous. And even if it's the dentist, it matters. And that phone call will go so far, you have no idea. A little human action, human interaction goes a really long way. And guess what? It doesn't cost you anything. It's amazing to me how many doctors I speak to that call me and say, what do we do about marketing? Do I text people? Do we, do we send out emails? And I say, you can do all of that. But is it really going to resonate on anybody right now, today? in the midst of, you know, what, what we're dealing with, you know, on a human level, how about we pick up the phone and say, how do you feel? Yeah. Yeah. Right. I, I think, think and I think, I think that's, uh, that's so powerful coming from someone with your background, more of like a digital marketing background, just kind of going back to basics and look, I mean, there's some patients that, that we, before we close our office, they had a tooth maybe that was kind of borderline, Guys, you know, think about it, guys. So think about the patients you had who, you know, it's a tooth that needs a root canal, right? Those patients, they still need a root canal. And do you think it gets better over time? Um, I love how, Evan, you just suggested, you know, you could, you could send an email blast or you can send a text or something. Or how about calling that patient? Say, hey, Mrs. Jones, how's that tooth? That tooth still bothering you? You okay? Is there something I can do? You know, um, Obviously, if they can handle not coming in, you know, we want to be careful there and say, hey, look, maybe calling in like a script or something, or maybe at that point, you make the decision to take care of that patient, right? Because that's, that's what it's all about. And, and we have a uh, Hannah here. She just, uh, I don't think you can see it, uh, uh, Evan, but I'll read what she says. She said, I'm surprised we haven't seen a larger number of dental professionals contracting this. 
I, I, I'm right there with you, Hannah. But I, but I think also it has something to do with the fact that we already take that seriously. So we're ultra careful, which is, um, which is, which is awesome to hear that. So that we don't have that many cases. And then she's saying what you said about the oral surgeon, what he said, how powerful that was that he's prepared, you know, there's a chance that he might, you know, contract it. And guys, like I said, the new reality, hopefully things get better, but the new reality is, is we're going to have to go in there and see these emergency patients, whether you like it or not. Right. I mean, if you're not motivated to take care of your patients, maybe you're motivated because you know what, you still need things rolling in your practice. So, you know, Evan, let's talk about this. You, uh, one of your, I'm going to kind of put you on the spot here. One of your clients, one of your clients is, uh, UPenn dental school, right? And, uh, you did something, you did something for them that I think that you should let everyone know that they should be doing for, for their own, own websites that you're going to be doing that for me too. And what is that? I mean, it's, it's not groundbreaking. So I don't want but, to say, but you know, people, but, they need to be thinking about that because like when I, I, when, when you told, when you reached out to me and I was like, Oh, okay. And I was like, Oh yeah. You know, I looked at you pin. I was like, yeah, I need to do that because remember guys, eventually, right. Whether this is the new norm, eventually life will get somewhat back to normal. I don't think it's ever going to be the same, but eventually you're going to have to go back to your practice. Eventually people are going to go back to work. Right. When that happens, you know, people need to know you're open. So what did you do with the UPenn site? I mean, I've done it with a bunch of sites, but I'll show you, uh, let me share this screen. So um, we've put up, uh, can you see the, can you see that? Mm -hmm. We've put up a lot of these notification banners at the top of the screen. I find them to be effective. They, they, they sit at the top. They basically have a very forthright message. Um, they don't in, interfere with the user experience, meaning when I say user experience, a lot of people don't like pop-ups. And I've seen a lot of pop-ups come up on doctor sites about COVID or you know whatever the news du jour is. Um, and they're long. They're like these long diatribes. And they immediately just get like sort of uh, turned off right yeah, away. Yeah, I mean, they, they feel they, 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 they probably feel bad. They already see this stuff all day long. They get the email. Literally, you were we were joking around how you were saying you got an email from McDonald's talking about the COVID nineteen, what they're doing. You know, I, I literally get it from everybody. I think we are so. I mean, I think we're so tired of getting those type of emails. But I love the fact that this is really a, like a small notification on the website, just say letting everyone know that, hey, we are here to take care of our own patients. So you got to put that on your website. Forget just putting it on your Facebook page, but how Evan did it, he put it on the UPenn site. Um, You got to let patients know, but also I told you this, Evan, uh, I have a couple of emergency patients I'm seeing tomorrow, dire pain, calling in the script is not going to work. I'm going to have to see them. And they're actually, they're not even patients at my own practice. They're their dentists are closed. Their dentist is not seeing them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just having something like that. So if you guys are using Evan, you need to talk to Evan to, to put that on your site, but whoever you're using with your website, you guys at least need to have that notification on your site. Yeah. I think your, your messaging, you know, what is it you, whatever, whatever your simple messaging about open, closed, what you're doing, what you're not doing, you know, if your patients need you, how do they find you? Um, you know, what, what do you want your patients to know right now about you and, or, you know, the practice, um, make it simple, make it short, make it to the point. Nobody needs to read, you know, about, you know, the CDC and the state and the guidelines. We're past that, right? We're, we're all past that. Um, you know, get to the point, um, and be efficient. You can use your, your Google, my business is another effective way to, to put it on there, do a a Google, my business post, um, put it up on your social media platforms, just anything that is, um, again, what do your, what do you want your patients to know that, 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 that you would want to know in a time of an emergency or a crisis, what to do if this happens? Um, I'm seeing patients for emergency only. What does that mean? A lot of people, a lot of people don't know what classifies as an emergency? I chipped my tooth. Is that an emergency? I don't know. Maybe. Like, you know, educate your 
customers a little bit. These are not, again, this is not groundbreaking information, but it's amazing to me how many people just don't do it. Um, if you want your phone to ring, okay, I've seen both ends of the spectrum with this. Um, some practices, yes, they are. Everybody's closed for the most part, closed. However, is your, do you still want your phone to ring so you can book out for May or June? Um, don't mark your business as closed. I have seen so many doctors say to me, should I go in, in my Google listing and mark my business as closed? No, do not mark your business as closed. Well, not and, closed. When, when, when they do that, that means closed as in going out, uh, went out of business, right? Well, so go, yeah, well, there's, there's closed, closed. That's a definite no. And then they've added a temporary closed feature. Um, I'm still leery about that. Uh, I, I generally, when it comes to Google and marking things as closed and making radical ch changes, I generally don't like doing those things. Um, I, for, for one, I think it causes a bad user experience. If I am a patient and I go to Google because I need to find your phone number or I wanna call you and it says temporarily closed, I'm probably not going to call you mm -hmm. when may, maybe I could have, and it would have resulted in maybe a future book, uh, a future appointment later down the road, or, you know, I, maybe I had an emergency and I, now I thought you were closed. And so I, I generally don't like, again, every practice has its own unique set of circumstances, but um, by and large, I generally tell businesses, if your phones are ringing and the phones are being answered, then leave everything as is okay. that's my personal that's good advice right there that's my personal preference because you still want the phone to ring right that's 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 my two cents um i just want to go back glenn for a second i want to talk about something that really i've kind of picked up on in the last week to 10 mm -hmm. days um and it's because i i, I there are so many doctors that I deal with that rely solely on digital mechanisms to drive people through the door, right? We've all become very complacent in the world we live in. And I'm a digital marketer, right? So I, I, I deal in this world. Mm -hmm. um, it's what I know. It's what I'm good at. Um, but it's not the only way. We sometimes forget about like picking up the phone and just being human. The doctors, and I've, and I've, you know, I, I get phone calls all day. What should I do with my pay-per-click? Should I turn off my Google AdWords? Should I run ads? Should I, what should I do? What should I put on Facebook? Um, I think the doctors really that I think that are going to come out of this thriving. I mean, when I say thriving, um, it will, what I mean is the practices that will have built their brands without really attempting to say, oh, I'm going to build my brand. I see a lot of doctors, even, you know, and when I say doctors, I'm talking to the dentist too. I'm, I'm not excluding them because you are, you know, your healthcare providers and you're in it just the same as an ER doc is, even though the ER doc is technically the front line and getting all the, you know, the, the attention. Um, I see doctors that are literally becoming focal points inside of their communities. So let me give you an example. <clears throat> I have a client um, who started three weeks ago, sitting in his room, th the same way you do, Glenn, mm -hmm. in front of his webcam. Uh, and he started doing these lives to his local town Facebook group. Okay, so there's probably what, seven, eight, 10,000 members in this guy's town. And he started doing Q and A's to his local town. I love the, that, man. As the town doctor. Um, and people were asking him questions and it started out very small, right? And he's not a Facebook social media guy. So he went outside of his comfort realm because he was getting a lot of phone calls. So he said, you know what? He called me. He said, what, what do you think I should do? I'm getting all these. I said, why don't you just go on Facebook live, go in the local group, your town group that I'm sure you're a member of, or your wife's a member of, or whoever, and do a live. And I'm sure people will love to hear what you think about, what they should do and should they be buying food and hoarding food and answer people's questions and be honest and transparent and, and, and be a dad and be a doctor and be a human being and tell them what you think. 
and they will love you. And then the next night he did it again. He learned a little bit more about the virus and he shared what he learned. Mm -hmm. And then he learned a little bit more and he shared what he learned. And then the fourth night, by this point, his videos were now being shared hundreds, if not thousands of times amongst all the local town groups. So it spread from town A to town B to town C, all his local community. Um, by the fourth night or fifth night, he did what you did, Glenn. He interviewed another doctor. He did a Facebook Live and he interviewed somebody that was a different, in a different slice of healthcare. And he wanted his opinion. And then the other people got to add. So my point in telling you the story is the people that are, are going to thrive in this environment are the people that are building their brands by becoming pillars in their community and being human and interacting and being vulnerable with the people that come to their practices, right? 70, 60, 70, 80% of most dental practices, the patient population comes from sub five miles. So you're, you're, you are, your business lives within five miles of your office. Okay. So it's important to remember to be, to communicate with that audience. And right now, and these people don't, they're not doing this for sake of, they're saying, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to go build my brand and here's how I'm going to go do it. It's mm -hmm. not like their intentions are business related. Their intentions are to provide value and, 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 you know, be leaders in their community and to help answer questions because we all live right now in the unknown and the unknown is a very scary place. We live in the unknown in terms of our business life, our personal life, our professional life. I have three children. They ask me every day if they're going to go back to school. I don't know. I have employees that work for me. What's going to happen in two months? I, I don't know. And, and, that's a scary place to be in for any of us as it, on any level, personally and professionally. And I think that the people that are going to really succeed out of this professionally and personally, but mostly professionally are the ones that's marketing message is really tailored towards, Hey, I'm here for you. I might not be your GP and I might not know everything about, I might not be a virus specialist, but I am a doctor. And ask me your questions. And I'm going to give you, and if I can't tell you the answer, I'm going to go find out for you because I have a lot of people in my network in the healthcare space and I want to try to help you. And, and that's what's, and that has nothing to do with Google AdWords or Facebook ads yeah. or that, that is people helping people, but doing it in a digital environment and being transparent and vulnerable with other people. That, I think to that, me, uh, is the messaging. Yeah, I think that is so amazing. Um, guys, if you like what you're hearing right now, type in the comments section, Evan. I see a bunch of you guys saying hello and whatnot. And thank you so much for jumping on. Uh, Evan and I, uh, for those who are now just coming, jumping on, uh, Evan and I were going to do a Facebook Live with about, uh, you know, a little bit of digital marketing stuff. And he's already kind of talked about a little bit about that. But uh, I wanted to go on it right now because we were having some real talk. And the real talk is... Um, you know, there's, there's going to be a new reality. Now, the extent of it, we don't know, right? Maybe the extent of it is that we're just going to be a little bit more careful as far as hygiene goes, as far as like the protective gear that we had to put on the dental practices, right? Maybe, maybe that's the new reality. Quite possibly the new reality could be that uh, we have to shift the way we do our business, right? And that is, you know, if we can't see patients for their elective dental procedures, um, Maybe it's just emergency, right? And maybe we got to get prepared for that. Maybe we need to market that, right? Maybe we need to put on our websites that we're, we're going to see emergencies like Evan just said. But he just brought up something that is so powerful. And that is, well, you know, people like to do business with people they like, right? And people like people who are very helpful. And think about all the things you guys learned in this group. Think about what you've learned just, I mean, it's amazing how our community has come together and like, hey, this is how you fill out the SBA loan, all these different things. This is what we should do and whatnot. And you think about the average business owner, they don't probably have the network we had. And everyone was just talking about how a doctor just went on and did a Facebook Live talking about dental stuff and health related stuff and just, just advice in general. And I think that's so awesome. You know, if you can get onto your 
communities Facebook group or there's a Facebook group that you can come on and just do some Facebook lives do a QA. and a that would be huge but I would say at the very least do it on your own Facebook page right your office Facebook page right hey this is what I learned recently about this SBA loan guys or this is what you should be doing you know we miss you in our practice you haven't had, I know you're overdue for a cleaning but this is what you can do at home right just to weather the storm until we can get you back in those things Evan I think it's so amazing. It's, it's such a such a great idea. Yeah, I mean, the other things that I think are gonna eventually work, not necessarily today in terms of, you know, marketing that are, again, just I'm giving little nuggets for consideration. These are not anything that I would say are hard and, you know, hard rules that you must do. Um, these are just things that I think you should think about. I think as we get closer to you know, we get into that warm up period. We're like, okay, I think maybe in some states we could be a week to 10 days out from possibly turning the lights on, you know, putting out some messaging. And even prior to that, um, some business, there are two types of business owners. Let me just take a step back first. Mm -hmm. There are two types of business owners right now that I'm talking to. One is scared shitless, pardon my French, <laughs> right? Th that is the guy who, or, or girl who is, you know, that business owner is slash and burn, kill the marketing, kill everything, kill this, kill that, kill, mm -hmm. kill, 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 kill. Okay. Um, that's pure survival mode. And I understand that. Then there is this business owner that says, this stinks. I, you know, I, nobody, nobody wished this upon any of us. However, I can't change it, but I'm going to use this time advantageously so that when I do come back, I come back stronger, smarter, more streamlined, more efficient, fiscally, operationally, in terms of my process, my procedures, update all my manuals, you know, the whole nine. And I, I there are two, <laughs> these are two different individuals and I've talked to both of them, you know, a lot. Um, to the individual that, that is trying to better and, and look at this as, oper you know, trying to see the glass half full, I think it's important to think about, you know, as we get closer to the time where business becomes more of a reality, going back to business becomes more reality, running some awareness campaigns through social. When I say awareness, meaning it's not $99 new patient special, come in to get your teeth cleaned, you know, click here for the offer. No, out with that. That's garbage. It's what have you done to make your environment the safest it's been? What changes have you made? Um, humanize the experience of going to, you know, ABC dental practice. Right. Um, you know, we've made, we've eliminated our waiting rooms. We are having all our patients check in from their cars. I love that. I you love know? that because it's so many things that, um, that we talked about here in our groups and, yeah. and, and it's a big deal. And do our patients know it? You know, I mean, my patients and, and I, I, I'm so motivated now, uh, Evan, I'm, I'm actually after we're done here, I want to do a Facebook, live, my, my Facebook page, uh, my office Facebook page, but it's literally we, we took away the magazines, right? We took everything away that could get any kind of virus on it, right? We used to have a nice coffee machine out there that's gone, right? All the magazines are gone, right? All the patients are waiting downstairs and they get a text message to come up, right? We see a limited amount of patients so that there's not a whole bunch of people in there. All those things that you just brought up that, you know what, we need to be telling our patients that. Yeah, if you don't, I mean, listen, it's one thing to do it, but if you don't communicate it effectively to them, and it, it, that doesn't mean send them an email and say, here's what we've done at ABC Dental Practice. Yeah, we've yeah. bullet point A, we've thrown out our magazines. Nobody cares that email will, if it gets read, it'll get deleted right away. Put up a video of you throwing away, like humanize the whole thing. People need and buy people. So I, I, I can't stress it enough that I'm not saying everybody got to go out there. You know, you don't got to make elaborate videos. You all got cell phones, just be you. Um, and just try to show your patients what, you know, what changes you've made. Um, I, I really, I can't stress it enough that, that you really need to constantly drive home that message because there's going to be a lot of practices that don't do anything. Yeah. They're going to go back to business exactly the way it was February 1st. 
And th those patients are, are going to want change. There's going to be a lot of patients that are up for grabs or out there that are going to want safer, cleaner environments. And I will say the other thing, the other thing that I think a lot of bread and butter dentistry practices need to think about is kids because the older, the older, not that I'm that old, um, but people like me are going to be a lot more reserved about going to the dentist because mm -hmm. we don't have to, right? It's not essential. I mean, I go over three months, but there's a lot of people that won't, but the kids are going to go. So as much as you may not have kids come to your practice, I'm going to tell you right now, you might want to start thinking about embracing peds because peds are going to be the way to get new body, new families in that door. I don't care what anybody says. It's, it's important you think about what your practice looks like in terms of the demographic of children that come through your doors because the mom brings the kids and 96% of all dental decisions are made by who? Mom. There you go. So if dad's going to come in, it's going to be because you got mom there and mom brought the kids and the kids are still going to get dentistry. I, I guarantee it. Kids will not, there will not be a fall off in dentistry for children. There will be a fall off in dentistry for 40 and 50 year old people. And 60 year old people. Well, I'll tell you what, I mean, uh, like I said, thank you so much, Evan, for jumping on man. I know we, uh, we were just discussing about um, some of these things to do on the website and it kind of turned into some real talk and, and uh, for those who are jumping on, thank you so much. I see a bunch of people typing in the comments section there, but I'm an action step type of guy. So let's go over to some of the action steps that we just talked about here. Okay. And, and, and number one, obviously, um, just letting your patients know, letting other patients know that you're actually open to see emergencies, right? Now, everyone has their own philosophy on what an emergency is, number one. Everyone has their own philosophy of um, whether you should keep your office open or not. That's, that's up to you. That's up to everyone. That's, that's, that's the great thing about this country, right? Everyone can make up their own mind and we have some little, a little bit of rules to play within. But I'm going to tell you guys this, that Evan and I, we were just talking and we both agree that there's going to be a new reality. You know, whether that means that we just have to do something different in our office Honestly, I that would be best case scenario, right? Oh, okay, so we got to use a little bit extra PPE, this and that, and then we can go back to business or normal. To me, honestly, I think we all would all agree that that would be the most ideal. Um, but a new reality could be that for an indefinite amount of time, we can only see emergency patients, right? And so you got to shift your marketing. That means you got to let people know that you're seeing emergency patients. And you also, what Evan said too, you got to let them know you're open, right? And don't screw up your Google listing by saying that you're closed. Try to keep everything the same. Um, you know, that's one thing. Another thing too, Evan, you brought up is, you know, you, you can just kind of show the human side of, of, of your practice. And, you know, whether that be doing Facebook lives in different groups or doing a Facebook live in your own Facebook page, but be there for the community, whether that's sharing information, dental information, specific information, or things they even learn in this group, right? There's, you, I have a lot of patients that are small business owners. They probably are overwhelmed by the SBA loan, right? And I've been having all these different experts on, maybe do something there to help your fellow business owners out, right? And uh, another thing too, is look for other opportunities, right? And that is, you know, maybe if you weren't seeing kids before, Evan was saying, Hey, maybe, maybe you need to embrace that a little bit. Um, but uh, Evan, a lot of good stuff there. I mean, we didn't even get into your, your specialty, which is the Google Maps. But guys, you already know what he does here. Reach out to him. But, but Evan wanted to just come on and he was like, look, Len, I'm not going to really talk about what I offer. I just want to give some business advice because I have a business myself. So Evan, thank you so much for sharing all that, man. It's my pleasure. I mean, listen, I, you know, I have had just, again, not to put my whole life story out there because I'm not going to do that, but I, I've had the, the, the fortunate and unfortunate circumstances in my life. You know, I, I ran a successful hedge fund. I've been on the brink of bankruptcy two different times in my life uh, in prior professions. Um, I gave, my wife gave birth to twin girls 
uh, at 24 and a half weeks on a Caribbean island. Um, I spent five months living in a NICU, a level four NICU. When they say what doesn't kill you will make you stronger, it really is true. It really is true. So I don't, you know, when I come on and I, I and I talk to doctors, it's, I'd say it as much as my expertise is in marketing and visibility and all that kind of stuff, I'd say 90% of what I talk about is in keeping your head up and focusing on getting things done. I mean, listen, it's very easy to curl up and die and, and, you know, put your head in a corner. Um, but the business, like I said, the, the, the business owners that will succeed and thrive are the ones that are going to become staples and pillars in their community. And sometimes it takes a real awful situation for leaders to arise, but they always do. And when they do, you will see that people will follow. They always do. And it does. And I, I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not trying to give, I'm not trying to make this more than it maybe should be, but it, it's, it, it applies in dentistry. I would take my family to a different dentist if I felt like, wow, this was, that's the person I really should be seeing. Right. He, he took out, he, she took action. They changed their practice. It's safer. Makes my wife feel more comfortable. Makes me feel more comfortable, whatever it may be. Everybody has their MO as to their, you know, their reasons to, for their decision-making. But I think it's important that you, the doctors communicate and do it on a personal level. I, I'd be, I, I honestly, Glenn, I'd be amazed to know if you took a poll of all the docs in nifty thrifty, how many of them actually have taken the time to pick up the phone and call, not all their patients, but make phone calls to their patients yeah. to well, talk to them. After this video, they will. Hopefully after this video. And so Evan, thank you so much for jumping on. Uh, great stuff. That's real talk right there, guys. That's real talk right there. Uh, but um, thank you so much. And guys, like I said, Evan's part of this community. You can always message him, right? I mean, you know, I always been telling everyone to reach out to him because he's absolutely the best guy to help your Google map rankings. He's the best at it, but he's more than just that. So reach out to him. He's part of our community. And Evan, thank you so much, my friend, for jumping on. Uh, it's my pleasure. And I hope everybody stays safe and, you know, healthy and to better times. Next time we'll have a beer and uh, hopefully yeah, we we'll, we'll be through this. <laughs> yeah. See you guys later.